Hi, I'm Ethan from Game Changer, and today we are going to be making this snowman stacker game that you see in the background right now. Make sure that you're comfortable with clones and physics before we start, but without further ado, let's get started. To get started, I'm going to add the actors and the background before adding any code. For the background, I filled the whole screen with a light blue color, and for the title screen and swells the ground, I've uploaded two images that I've linked in the description below. Lastly, for the snowman, I just drew three parts that we will need for the game. Just the white circle, the body segment, and the head. Be sure to name these segments as well so that we can refer back to them later. Now that we have our background and actors, let's code the start screen. For now, I'm going to hide this by moving it up to Y900. And when I press the play button, which is when the game starts, I want to draw some text on the screen and play some music that'll go on forever. Now that we have done that, we can play the project and see these instructions as well as hear our music. Awesome! The next thing we are going to do is clear the instructions when the player presses the screen to start the game. To do this, let's go to events and let's find when screen clicked and drag that on to the board. To clear this text, we just need to go to pen and drag in a clear block. After that, let's make the title itself disappear again by going to motion and dragging in a go to block. And let's just put it off of the screen like so. How we're going to actually make the snowballs fall and stack the snowman is using gravity, which actually uses Tinker's physics. Now we don't want any of the title screen or anything like that falling, so we're gonna set active to false for this object. And lastly, we only want this to run one time, so we're going to make it wait forever after it's been run, so that it can't run again. When we press the screen, we also want other objects to receive an event, and we're going to call it Game Start. Go to Events, and find Broadcast. And we're going to broadcast Game Start. And since the only thing that we want to move from gravity is the snowman itself, Let's go ahead and set active to false for both the stage and the ground. But for the ground, we also want it to stay in this position that you see here. So go ahead and set these numbers to what you see on the screen here. X0, Y minus 280, Z2, and size 246. Now that we have that, let's code the moving part of the snowman. The first thing that we want to do is rename actor to snowman. This will be important later when you are changing costumes with the snowman. Before we click the screen to start the game, we actually don't want to see the moving part of the snowman. So we want to hide it. Drag in on start and under looks, you can find the hide block. This will make it so you can't see the snowman until we actually start the game. And we are going to receive game starts once we actually want to start the game. Click on the bubble and you should see game start. Once the game starts, we want to show the moving piece of the snowman and obviously move it. So the first thing that we're going to do is show it so that we can actually see it. We actually also want it to start on a side of the screen. So I'm going to go to motion and drag in a go to and change this to minus 800 to 25. And because we stack the snowman only after the game starts, let's start physics when we receive game start. We also don't want the original object, which is the moving piece, to fall down because that is the one that moves back and forth. So let's drag in a set active to false for this one as well. Lastly, we want to set a gravity so that the pieces of the snowman will actually fall. Change gravity to be 0 by 30. The last thing that we can do before testing the game again is go to control and drag in a forever block. After we do that, Let's also drag in a couple of glide blocks so that we can make it slide left and right forever. Let's do glide 1.5 seconds, so one and a half seconds, to the right side of the screen at 600 225, and 1.5 seconds back to the left side of the screen 
at negative 600, 225. Now, when we play the game, we just have to click to start, and you can see the snowman go back and forth. Just like that, you can see the top piece is moving from side to side. Before we get to stacking the snowman, let's make sure that the moving piece disappears when the game is over. Now, we haven't coded a game over yet, but let's drag in a when I receive block, and let's type game over. When this actually happens, we want to hide the actor so that we only see the score afterwards, not the moving piece of the snowman. The next thing that we want to do is stack the snowman when the user clicks on the screen. So we'll use when screen clicked, and we actually only want the original object, which is the moving piece, to clone itself. So let's find the clone block, which says create clone of any. First thing we want to do is change it to self because we want it to clone itself. And the next thing we want to do is find if, and we only want it to clone itself if it's not a clone and if it's not hidden. Because if it's hidden, that means we're not even playing the game. So to do this, let's go to operators and find not and the and block. Let's drag these in. And to find hidden, we can actually just search for it not hidden, and to check if it's a clone, we just have to search for clone, and drag in is clone. So when the screen is clicked, if it's not a clone, so if it's this moving piece, and it's not hidden, which means if the game is playing, then we create a clone of itself. Let's see what this looks like. If we play the project now, and we drop a snowball, you can see it just falls through the screen, because we don't know when to stop it. So that's what we're going to fix. We're going to draw an invisible line, and if the snowball falls below this invisible line, then we'll make it stop, and we'll increase the score so that we can tell how many snowballs have landed. What I'm going to do is go to Events and find when false occurs. Now in here, we're going to use a variable for this invisible line, and I'm going to call it head level. I'm going to make it for all actors, and when I stop the project, I want to reset it back to negative 280, which is pretty much right where this ground is. So I'll create this. So I want to check the Y position, which is how far up or down the snowball is. If it goes below this head level, then we want to run all of the code here. So let's drag in less than. And when Y position is less than head level, so when the snowball drops below this invisible line, we're going to run all of this code. So there's a couple things we want to do. First, we actually want the snowball to stop. So let's go to physics and drag in set active to false. The next thing we want to do is actually increase the score. And we're going to use a variable to keep track of score as well. I'll make it for all actors. And when we stop, I want to reset it back to zero. So once again, when it falls below this invisible line, I want to add one to the score as well. After increasing the score and setting active to false, let's see what happens. So you can see that they all land in the same spot, which isn't really helpful. To fix this, we actually can increase head level, which will make this invisible line go up. Let me show you what I mean. I'll go ahead and change head level by 100. So every time the snowball falls, it'll move the invisible line up. So here, and then I'll drop another one, it'll land above it this time. And so on, and so on. <laughs> you can see right here, we actually don't want it to land because this would be a game over since the snowballs aren't close enough to each other. And when we drop the second snowball, right before it lands, we actually have a score of 1. And we want to check if snowman, snowman 2 is close enough to Snowman 1. So we're actually going to check for the distance to Snowman 1. But since Snowball 3 will fall after 2 and so on, we actually want to check if... 
the distance to snowman, this should be the same name as over here, plus the score is less than a certain amount. And what I mean by that is if we press play, this is snowman one and this is snowman two, right? So we wanna check if the, if the distance to snowman one is less than 115. And I've just tested this enough so that I know 115 means that they're actually touching. And let's put this inside of an if block. And let's drag everything inside. So now, if the snowball doesn't land on top of the previous one, it'll just fall past it. Like, let's drop one here. Let's land one. You can see if it lands, everything still happens. But if we click over here, it'll just fall through because the distance to this piece is actually more than 115. Now, I actually should have used an if else because we also want to run some code if it's not close enough. So let's put this in an if else and let's drag that up there. So when I drop the snowball, if it's close enough to the previous one, it'll increase the score by one and it will set active to false and it will move the invisible line up. That's great and all, but what if I make it so that the snowman gets too high? You can see it just keeps going up and that doesn't really work once you get here. So what we actually wanna do is if the head level reaches a certain amount, we actually want everything to move down instead. So what we can do is actually check if the head level is above or below zero, which is halfway up the screen. You can see zero, zero is here. So if the head level is less than zero, we'll increase it by 100. But if it's already above zero, we'll move everything down. And to do that, we'll drag in an if block, or actually we'll drag in an if else block, and we'll go to conditionals and drag in a less than block. And what we're going to check here is if head level is less than zero, then we'll change the head level. Otherwise, we want to tell everything to move down by broadcasting a message. And I'm going to call this move down. And what we actually want to move down is all of the clones that already exist, as well as the ground. So let's drag in a when I receive. So when all of the clones receive, move down, then we want them to move down, but we don't want the original object to move down, which is the moving piece. So let's drag in an if false, and let's make sure it's a clone by scrolling down and dragging in its clone. And the last thing we wanna do is actually make it move down by going to motion and dragging in a glide block. We'll make it glide for half a second. We'll make sure the left right position, so the X position stays the same, and the Y position we, since we want it to move down, we'll subtract 100. And let's put Y position minus 100. And notice how this is the same 100 that the head level moves by. And one more thing we need to do is make sure that the ground also moves down. But since the ground doesn't have any clones, let's drag that out and let's get rid of the clone check. Now when we play the project, everything should move down when we stack the snowman halfway. Perfect. So you can see everything is now moving down. Uh, the next thing that we'll do is go back to the snowman and we want to draw the score. So I'm going to go to pen. I want to clear everything that's already there so that the score doesn't stack up. And let's go to set the font. I'm going to change the font size to 80 and I'm going to draw a text that says the score. Let's go to operators, find the square plus block, drag in score. And on the left side, this is going to be the label. It's going to say score. And I will draw this in the top left. For me, that is negative 660, 310. So if I play now, if I drop one, you'll see the score go up. It says score one. Then I'll go score two, score three, score four, and so on. But when I lose, I want it to say game over. 
and I actually want to broadcast this game over event. And that's pretty simple. All we have to do is go to events and broadcast game over. And of course, we want to draw a text game over. So let's also do that. Get rid of this guy. And I'll put it right below the score label. Now, if we play it and we get the score, you can see the score is showing. And when we get a game over, it will say game over and everything will hide. Except you actually don't want all of the clones to hide. So let's go to here. And if it's not a clone, we'll hide it. Okay, so if it's the original object, we'll hide it. So let's go to operators, drag in the not block and control and clone. So if it's not a clone, it will hide, meaning just the moving piece will hide. Let's try again. One, two, and I missed. So it's a game over. The original piece decided to hide itself and these two are still here. Finally, let's actually use these costumes we created in the beginning to show the snowman when we build it. We actually want to do this only when the snowman piece actually lands. So when it lands, we're going to put it right here, right after the score changes. So let's go to events and broadcast costume change. And this will tell all of the snowman pieces to show the correct costume. Now, when we receive it, we want to check after we add the score, if this specific actor name is the same as the score, then we will set the costume to the head. Otherwise, we want to set it to the body. So I'm going to actually check if, and we let's go to sensing and find actor name. And we want to check if this is equal to snowman, so what you have right here, snowman, plus score. Actually, we wanted to use an if else block. So let's drag this over here. If it's the top piece, we want to change the costume to head. And if it's not the top piece, then we'll change it to the body. So now, once every single one lands, you'll see it change to a headpiece or a body piece. See the top one is the head. Oh, and we actually don't want it to do anything if it's the original. You see the original, we want it to stay as a blank one. So we need to check only if it's a clone to change costumes. And drag this check inside of that. Now when we play it, this will stay blank. And this will become the head. And oh, we missed. So now if we play it and we land this one, it becomes the head since it's the top. And the next one, you can see the top one is always the head and everything else is always the body. And when we get a game over, you can see it stays just like that. So thank you for watching this video. And I hope you enjoyed making your very own snowman stacker. Also, don't forget to tune in to the next couple of days of our holiday special where you will learn to create four more exciting games. See you then.